Herm Edwards, Season 2 at Arizona State, Sun Devils position previews, offense and defense, next on Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We're talking up Arizona State football for 2019 here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We've got uh, Jordan K on the line from Devil's Digest. It's the uh, Rivals platform for Arizona State Athletics. Jordan, how are you doing today? I'm good, Mark. How are you? I am doing great. I want to remind everyone that you can help us build the channel by grabbing the Amazon link in the description section below. Just do your regular Amazon shopping using that link and you help support the channel. Also, we've got two exclusive live streams at uh, the Voice of College Football Community. The link is below as well. I uh, deliver one of two live streams responding to your comments. The other one in which I bring you directly on to talk to me on college football right now talking to jordan about arizona state uh, coming off a seven and six campaign in 2018 uh, jordan let's look at the offense and Nikhil harry of course uh, the freakish athlete that um, moved on to the nfl in particular among a number of uh, people but uh let's uh, start with the offense uh, anywhere you want to go in regards to uh, what stands out to you where do you yeah. think the um, concerns are I think first it starts at quarterback. Uh, ASU lost Manny Wilkins. It's three-year starter who graduated. And right now they have four quarterbacks in their quarterback room vying for that starting spot. Three freshmen in Ethan Long, Joey Yellen, and then the four-star super hyped-up prospect, Jaden Daniels, and then the redshirt junior in Dylan Sterling Cole, who after spring ball it looked like he kind of had the edge just because of his maturity, he understood the offense, knew all the pieces. He was just ahead, and you could definitely tell that at spring ball. But it would not shock me in the slightest to see Jaden Daniels come out of the gates in the fall, kind of have this offense with six months of the offense and the playbook under his belt, all the summer work with his wide receivers, and really just come out and take that starting spot. That's where you have to start with the offense, and that's kind of – What's going to predicate ASU's success in 2019 is did they nail the quarterback? Did they kind of figure out and work out all the kinks of losing a three-year starter? And is that guy going to be the starting quarterback for the next two years, at least maybe three? So, Jordan, based on what they ran uh, last season in particular in Herm Edwards' first season, although obviously there was a carryover in coaching staff from the previous yeah. regime under uh, Todd uh, Graham, any thoughts to whose skill set might uh, fit the offense the best? That's kind of the, the interesting part of this because you have Dylan Sterling Cole, who's more of a pocket passer who can sling it about 65 yards, just no problem. And then Jaden Daniels, who's more of a, a dual threat guy. I believe he ran for almost uh, ran for a couple thousand yards in high school. I want to say it was four or 5,000 yards, threw for another 14,000. He is the prototypical dual threat quarterback. And I think right now they don't want to make too many structure offense adjustments and, and really go one way or the other because I think they want to wait for who is the quarterback. So early in spring camp, they were kind of just throwing together some few basic plays. And with that, they were kind of just seeing, okay, can they do the basics? And they were kind of working off that to begin with. Then I think once they start to really identify who the quarterback is going to be, that's where you're going to start to see the offense take shape. And what that means for fall ball is I would assume that they're going to kind of let everyone run a, a specific, I don't know, kind of a vanilla offense of what they ran last year. Um, and then once they start to figure out the quarterback, I think that's when you can start seeing them put in some extra stuff. And that extra stuff, if it's, Jaden Daniels, it's going to be a lot of probably RPOs and maybe design quarterback runs. That's Dylan Sterling Cole. You're probably going to see a lot of deep balls on first and second down. And I think that's kind of kind of be the, the difference of last year where you knew what the offense was going to be. Sure, the coaching staff had changed a little bit. But this year, I think it's kind of um, still up in the air. Obviously, with Eno Benjamin coming back, um, one of the best running backs ASU's ever had, broke the school record for yards last year. They're going to run the ball quite often. And that's why I think the quarterback thing maybe um, isn't as big of a deal for, for some people because you're like, hey, we got Eno. We have this go-to guy no matter what. But in a sense, it's, that quarterback is going to be so important. And because you have Eno, it's about what else can you put around him. 
And that quarterback is going to dictate a lot of what, how much they go past to run and how much they go running back runs and then quarterback runs. Yeah, it's definitely a comfort when you know a guy carried the ball 300 times last year, caught 35 passes out of the backfield, scored 18 touchdowns, and you either say, let's just give it to him, or most quarterbacks uh, playing in the Pac-12 should at least be able to throw a swing pass out to this kid uh, in in, uh, space uh, to let him do his thing, but you don't win division championships or or even get to postseason play by being one-dimensional, so obviously the passing game is still going to have to be – something that stretches the defense down the field, which of course, Nikhil Harry and his 73 catches and 14 touchdowns, uh, which don't even highlight what he was able to do just athletically. You would have to see it to believe it many of the times, but uh, Kyle Williams is back. Uh, Do you like the receiving core? I I think it's still kind of a question mark. And last season in the Las Vegas bowl against Fresno state, that was kind of the first test of life after Nikhil and what that was going to look like. I don't think it kind of answered all the questions that people were hoping for. Um, You do have another guy coming in, Brandon Ayuk, who was a junior college transfer last year. Had a solid year, but you could definitely see the potential. Um, He really started out his season kind of as an unknown, was working a lot of slip screens and short slant passes that maybe he could go upfield with. And I think just based upon the spring, they were trying to really improve his route tree try and get him to more of those intermediate and deep passes that Akil was just so good at. The other guy you have is Frank Darby, who is pretty much just ASU's deep ball threat. And when you have a guy like Nikhil gone, you're going to need someone else to be able to kind of go over the top of the defense. The only problem with him is he dropped a lot of balls last season and dropped a lot in the spring too. Um, That's going to be the question mark. Other than that, they don't have a, a lot of other guys that they can trust on the receiving court. They have redshirt freshman Jordan Porter, who I think is still a work in progress. We saw some good things from him in spring, especially out of those kind of short to intermediate passes, not too much on the deep ball. But that's going to be the the kind of life after Nikhil thing. It's You're not going to have this one guy who defenses can double team. It's going to be a wide receiver by committee type deal where I think you're going to start seeing whoever the quarterback is, they're going to be distributing the ball pretty evenly amongst Uh, Kyle Williams, amongst Brandon Ayuk, amongst Frank Darby, amongst Jordan Porter. You're going to start seeing the ball go to a lot of different places and not last year where sometimes you would see just Nikhil, Nikhil, Nikhil. Um, That's going to be the interesting part. The other part is without Nikhil, you don't have that that kind of distraction that defenses are going to go to. So now you're going to start seeing some of the Brandon Ayuk and Frank Darby who have never been double teamed in their life. They might have a safety come over because – who else is the safety going to guard? And that's going to be the, the kind of interesting part to see what offensive coordinator Rob Likens can do um, in kind of maximizing all the talent of the weapons he has, but knowing he doesn't have that superstar that can just go up and third and 10, throw the ball to him. So that's going to be the interesting part of the the offense and, and the wide receivers in general. And also with 335 touches out of Benjamin, I don't know that he can withstand that kind of pounding year after year. Uh, That type of workload, you would think, can't be increased. It it may be maintained this season. And uh, with the uh, inexperienced quarterback, uh, Isaiah Floyd obviously was a guy that uh, carried 45 times last year. But uh, is there uh, dependable uh, compliments to uh, Eno Benjamin out of the backfield? No, <laughs> no, there's, there's not. Uh, they have A.J. Carter, who's more of kind of a power back, but um, he redshirted last year. You have Isaiah Floyd, who's a smaller guy and, and has looked good in practice, but then he gets out on the field yards. But that's the thing. it's They have Eno in the backfield and no one else to really compliment him. There's not that, that third down guy. They want to go Eno, Eno, Eno. Um, he rarely comes off the field and Last year, it worked. For the most part, it worked. Defenses really couldn't stop him most of the time. He was great going up the middle, great questions, wing passes. He was a monster in the red zone. But at a point, you got to think, is that production going to slow down when he just keeps getting carry after carry and keeps getting hit? I don't think he's going to be able to carry the ball as much as he did last season. I think in an ideal world, not thinking about kind of get him the ball as many times as possible, 